So another plant nutrition topic that's been widely used in cannabis is flushing. So let's take a look at flushing. First, first we get rid of all this. Next slide. What about the effects of flushing on plants? Now flushing usually means toward the end of the life cycle, rinse the root zone to flush extra nutrients out of the root zone down the drain. And so really it means flushing without fertilizer. We, we would rarely do flushing with fertilizer. Usually means without fertilizer, either more dilute or none at all, just tap water. In our studies here, if you have excess fertilizer, it does help to flush because the fertilizer builds up too high and you gotta get rid of those high levels. But if you do not use excess fertilizer to start with, we have never found a value of flushing the root zone. Um, it, it just doesn't help if you didn't have excess fertilizer to start with. So we don't recommend flushing. We do recommend an appropriate level of fertilizer so that you don't need to flush. Now this is closely related to another topic, removing nitrogen in the final weeks of growth, the final weeks before flower. This is related to flushing, only in this case, we're only removing the nitrogen. The calcium, magnesium, sulfur, phosphorus, potassium, those things are all in there, just the nitrogen. So this is a little different because it's precision, you can call this precision flushing. This can help if the nitrogen was too high but what if the nitrogen wasn't too high? What is their value of, we can call this nitrogen deprivation of the plants. Now nitrogen's a key element, makes proteins, helps make chlorophyll, it's, it's key. Can we precision stress the plants with low nitrogen to improve quality? This is such an important question that we've done several studies on this here, and let's take a look at, at our studies. So here's weeks without nutrients, and this is weeks without and not end. So the control is here. That means full fertilizer, right to harvest, one week without nitrogen, two weeks. And two weeks is about as long as we'd recommend. The plants show lack of nitrogen. The leaves get yellow, it's clearly running out of nitrogen. The key here, and, and the yield slightly decreases from this. So the quality of the plant has to be higher to justify the slightly lower yield. So this is two studies, I don't know if you can see this, but this is trial one right here. And this is CBD and THC. Now, at our license is only to use low THC cultivars, so we're at 10 or 15 percent CBD and 0.5 THC. Um, as, a, as a research license, we can go to 0.5, but it's very low. In study one, there was a minimal effect of removal of nitrogen, almost a completely flat line. We did the study again, repeated it, and in study two, there's an upward effect in, in both THC and CBD. It's slight, but this effect right here can be about 15%, which is important to consumers. Um, it's an important difference. The challenge is associating this difference with statistical significance so that we're sure that it, we can, it's a reproducible effect. We run lots of statistics. The p-value indicates the probability that this could have happened by chance. So this number right here, these are all 40% chance, 79% chance, but look at trial two, a 12% chance, and this number, we're gonna round that to a 10% chance. Um, now, we'd like to be more sure than a 10 or 12% chance, so we're looking at this um, to follow it up. Um, 
there is some evidence of a slight increase in yield. Let's take a look at these two studies combined because we, the studies were similar. If we average these two studies together, boom, then we get this slide. A, on average, a very slight increase, 23% chance it could happen by chance. Now, THC was a slightly better, point, point, or slightly worse. This is a 50% chance happen by chance. So some evidence that it can increase cannabinoids, um, but it has to be done carefully because you don't want to have a yield decrease. But there are many other reasons that a precision stress like this can help plants. One, if the plants make less chlorophyll, then the other pigments come out, like anthocyanins, you can get an increase in purple color of the flowers. Um, some of that decrease in chlorophyll is a good thing in flowers. It might help with flower bud compactness. This whole thing is an example of precision nutrient stress to improve quality. You would not get, be able to get these results with organic nutrients. They're slow release and you can't pinpoint um, nutrient levels. So this is a summary of our uh, studies on nitrogen deprivation.